And um, I have to answer the, uh, the question, is artificial heart ready for long-term support uh, in pediatric population? So the answer is not. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> we, are <laughs> we are sorry, but it was really very short. At this time, it's not possible to get an iPad. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> oh, probably have any ideas. <laughs> Well, if I have 10, 15 minutes, I try to turn this note and possibly yes. Um, so let us speak about factors impacting the decision algorithm in patients with end-stage heart failure. Increasing number of patients surviving their adulthood and such as those with univentricular hearts uh, who may develop end-stage heart failure years uh, after um, normal life um, that is the first factor. And the next factor is significant number of adult patients who is now 40, 50 years old after sending on a master procedure who leave, uh, uh, live normal life the last years and now going in trouble. The problem is the number of pediatric heart transplantation is stagnating. And the other problem is that our experience with mechanical circulatory support, with long-term mechanical circulatory support, does not last uh, beyond five years uh, in most patients. So the, most patients are transplanted or die uh, approximately two, three, four years on support. There's only a few patients, and in Toratec experience with HeartMate 2, over 15,000 patients supported with HeartMate 2, it's only uh, 14 uh, to my, uh, the stand of December last year, 14 uh, beyond eight years supported on, uh, on the pump. So it's really, really few experience and we have good experience with heart transplantation uh, and patients survive uh, beyond 20 years. So what are the goal with mechanical circulatory support? Our goal is, it is, it is um, clear uh, why I am the last speaker. Um, after all these ventricles uh, fail, we have to save the life. We have to keep the patient alive, and it's possible only with mechanical circulatory support. And we have three possibilities. We have permanent support. We have recovery of the heart. It's uh, not likely in patients with congenital heart disease after 40 years um, uh, on uh, living with uh, univentricular heart and uh, also bridge to heart transplantation. But let us check the questions. Who needs long-term mechanical circulatory support? What is artificial heart? Do we speak about a ventricular assist device or do we speak about a total heart replacement? What to support? The left ventricle, the right ventricle, a single ventricle, systemic ventricle, or just should we support the hemodynamic without to think about uh, which ventricle it um, used to be? And what does it long-term mean? Pediatric, uh, for adults, five years is long term. For patients who are 65 years uh, old, five years is long term. For the child who is 10 years old, five years it is short term. So we have to define these uh, questions. And uh, I will try to uh, show you some, um, uh, some perspectives uh, in mechanical circulatory support. So who is a head, uh, transplant candidate? Patients. Um, with long-term, uh, long waiting time. For example, for example, um, cardiomyopathy of different etiology, single ventricle anatomy after palliation, primary pulmonary hypertension, GUCH patients. There are, of course, patients with high risk for heart transplantation, failing Fontan, or patients who are not a candidate for heart transplantation due to age or organ dysfunction or just because of the anatomy. So these patients are candidate, candidates for long-term mechanical circulatory support. The next question is um, artificial heart. Or, you know, it is maybe ventricular support device, or it's really um, cardiacectomy and replace the heart with total artificial heart. Um, Ventricular assist devices, we start with ventricular assist devices the, and possibilities uh, for pediatric population. Berlin Heart x -Core Pediatric. This is a very good device and uh, one, uh, one device fits all because uh, of different sizes. It's extracorporeal position 
And um, in small children, it's a problem because the patients are born to the hospital because of anticoagulation. And um, this device shows some elevated rate of cannula infection, but thromboembolic events that are comparable with implantable devices. This is um, Berlin Heart X score. You see here different pumps uh, from very small one, 10 milliliter stroke volume uh, for um, newborns, uh, 2 kg, and up to 60 milliliters, and even in adults, 80 milliliters of stroke volume, so fits all. The same is cannula. Problem is this ACUS driver, uh, Bilky, and uh, for pediatric population, it's uh, now the company um, will bring up a new driver, portable driver, also for pediatric population. The problem is a technical issue because the pressure to pump through these small, uh, small cannulas and small pumps, um, the device needs a very high pressure and can be generated only by this uh, Bilky uh, driver. The number of um, Berlin Heart X cores implanted worldwide increasing continuously, and uh, now um, you see here it's all together. In this year, it's uh, more than 400 devices are implanted worldwide. The survival is not bad or not good. It uh, depends on your point of view, but at least um, here in North America, it's over 75%. And um, in uh, Europe, it's approximately 75%. At Germany, a little bit less, uh, but it's, uh, of course, not significant differences. Depends on um, etiology. The best patients, the best chance in the patients with um, cardiomyopathy and myocarditis, but at the same, cardiomyopathy or myocarditis actually the same, and the worst, um, worst uh, results are in patients with congenital heart disease. Uh, depending on BioVet on LVAT, um, the BioVet patients do uh, worse, but it's not because of, of the pump. It's not because they have two pumps. It's completely wrong point of view. They do worse because the patients are much worse and are much more ill. And th th this is the reason why they do require two pumps to support left and right ventricle, mostly patients in shock and, or from ECMO. So this is the reason why the survival is less in bivet patients. Burden heart X score allows very good uh, mobilization of the patients, ambulation of the patient, and you see here some examples. And um, it's uh, really easy. It's not easy, but uh, if we, with good experience, with such experience, our, our pediat pediatricians have um, the patients could be mobilized very, very good. And second point is the care of this patient. And you see here, since the single person managing anticoagulation in, in, um, in this department in Little Rock in Arkansas, single person managing anticoagulation, the results improved. This is a declining number of uh, thromboembolic events. Uh, so it's very important that uh, the, the care, postoperative care of these patients. So, um, this device is better than ECMO. And this guy was more than three years on assist device, successful transplanted uh, in our institution. And um, it is uh, this sentence that device is better than ECMO. You can see it by yourself. But this has been proven by um, in um, a randomized multicenter study supported by FDA. So the conclusion of the study, Berlin Heart is better than ECMO. What else? We have hardware, hardware HVAT. Mm, it is adult pump, and uh, it was uh, was um, constructed and produced for adults. But in our institution, Dr. Huber implanted some years ago this uh, this pump in an adult, uh, 17 kg uh, of weight. Uh, this pump uh, gives the patients very good quality of life. It's implantable. The patients could be a really um, a, a discharge home. Uh, on um, anticoagulation oral or subcutaneously anticoagulation with low molecular heparin, has lower uh, thromboembolic events rate and, um, and better or comparable to Berlin Heart X score. But um, we have limited experience with single ventricle. We have some patients, but it's really a limited experience. And these are the patients who are uh, implanted with this device in our institution published some years ago. Seven patients, and the last patient, number seven, 
uh, this is a, this uh, girl, 17 kg, and you see here that the pump uh, produces uh, approximately up to, up to mitral valve. Dilative cardiomyopathy is a huge heart. It is a good uh, for, for this pump. So, but it's up to mitral valve. Uh, and um, and then, in the um, visions, I will explain you, and I will show you how to solve the, such problem. But you see here, the girl is independent, and here this is a pump, uh, weights approximately uh, 3 kg. So, single ventricle anatomy, very complicated situation. Berlin heart x core heart wear used, and total artificial heart. So um, there are some papers about um, use of Berlin heart x core in patients with single ventricle anatomy. It is from this uh, randomized multicenter study which proved that uh, Berlin heart x core is better than ECMO. And they have some patients with single ventricle anatomy, 26 from 281, so 10% uh, from uh, patients supported uh, in this study with X-core uh, single ventricle anatomy, and survival is um, only the half of the survival of other patients. You see it here, here patient de death on device, 42%, and there's post-explant, so together 54, and here it's 24. So the single ventricle anatomy, it's really difficult to support and uh, the outcome is worse than other patients. Um, this is patient from our institution supported approximately 24 hours uh, with hardware, um, single ventricle anatomy, and then the patient was transplanted. Because it is that, that complex, uh, colleagues, uh, pediat pediatricians, uh, and uh, also surgeons, they um, started um, some idea to um, organize, to implement a special registry for mechanical circulatory support and single, single ventricle patients. And this is a publication just with idea to have this um, registry, special registry for these patients only. What's about biventricular support? You see here, it's a not a congenital heart disease, a dilative cardiomyopathy, 22 years old, but this guy looks like a child. He was 35 kg, cahectic, and uh, due to ca cardiac cahexia, and this guy received, um, uh, received uh, from me two pumps um, on the left side and the right side, and uh, this was um, a case of uh, treating cardiac cachexia by uh, ventricular assist device. He gained 25 kg weight and uh, now he is at home um, two years. Available availability of total artificial heart for children. It's not available. Did it's completely no, because the um, uh, only total artificial heart, cardiovascular cardia, is its huge device and av available only for adult patients and um, it has been used in single ventricle anatomy in uh, Gooch patients, but recommended body surface area 1.7 and reported uh, some anecdotes 1.5. Well, a smaller version of uh, CardioVest will be available in the next future, but now we do not have smaller version. And just example for you, this distance between spinal cord and spinal and um, uh, sternum should be more than 10 centimeters. And uh, you see here, uh, patients 90 kg, that's would fit because it's more than 10 centimeters, but this patient is also 90 kg. But in this case, it would not fit because this distance is less than 10 centimeters, and it's adult. So it's not available for pediatric population. In some cases, you can try to fit it with computer program, you know, virtual fitting, virtual surgery, and then implant, but it's really, really difficult. And a lot of um, com and main problem is compression of pulmonary veins, um, for example. So this is a U uh, U.S. experience uh, with congenital and um, in adults, in good patients, and um, the survival is more or less the same, approximately 50% are bridged to transplantation with CardioVest. So this is, um, on the right side, you see here the small version, 50cc, it's a little bit less. So the distance 
between uh, spinal and uh, sternum uh, should be uh, more than eight centimeters. So we gain two centimeters here in this situation. So probably 70 kg or 60 kg, 60 to 70 kg would fit. It's not too much for pediatrics. Heart via HVAT. Next possibility. So it's no need to fit cardiac anatomy. Of course, we, uh, we need two atria and uh, great vessels. Good quality of life, two hardware pumps as total artificial heart. And um, the um, lowest body surface area was 1.3 1, 1. Um, square meters. And what's good is the small version, MWAT, will be available soon. And this is how to do it. This is a report from, um, from Hannover, from Strube. There's two hardware pumps as a total artificial heart connected to the atria here, and it's uh, the connection between, um, uh, between outflow grafts and great vessels is not down, so it's the next step, but here you see two pumps connected to the atria, and this is the X-ray of this patient. Im important to say that um, Ventricular assist devices do not, long-term use in pediatric population, do not affect long-term quality of life after heart transplantation. This is uh, good news. My mission, my personal mission in this year regarding assist devices um, is to implement these two devices in clinical practice. We will get this for um, clinical studies in summer. We hope to get it in summer. And this MWAT, um, I, I hope that uh, we, can, we will be able to use this pump um, for pediatric population because this pump is much smaller. And uh, the um, second, um, second interesting point, it's not necessary to place the pump completely inside of the left ventricle, and it's possible to move the, side, the pump outside of the, um, of the fixation ring. So and, uh, the, the depth of the producing of the pump inside of the left ventricle, it's various. So it is a very good uh, feature. What's about visions? Missions and visions. Now about visions. And um, approximately eight years ago, it was a vision of National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute in the United States to start the pumpkin trial. And they start the trial to um, uh, develop um, artificial heart or ventricular assist devices for pediatric population. And um, it was the, uh, the start, you see here uh, a lot of ideas, a lot of prototypes here, and um, you see here some prototypes gone, and some new devices arrived on horizon, and um, by the end, uh, this device gone, because a problem with, with money. Uh, this device uh, uh, requires additional work and additional costs. And now we have two devices in this program, pump, Pumpkin program, 20 millions uh, was uh, spent for this program. Now the outcome is uh, still uncertain. We have Jarvik 2000, this pump, infant um, pump. It uh, has been implanted only once in, um, in pediatric. It's gone through all the um, animal studies and implanted in one case, um, as um, you know, it was a just um, last resort. And um, this system on the right side, the system on the right side is, um, is still not in clinical practice. So, but this is, um, the, uh, this is a completely different system. On the left side is ventricular assist device. On the right side is an ECMO system. It's, um, it's an oxygenator combined with a centrifugal pump. You see it here, the oxygenator here, and from Toratec, and uh, this is uh, two different ideas behind. Um, Jarvik 2000. As I told you, it uh, went through all these uh, animal studies, a small device, and is suitable for, um, for children uh, starting with 4 kg of weight. And um, PDPL system, this uh, combination of pump and oxygenator, it's also, we hope, that will be available soon, and um, it's also available for small children. So the, um, the um, NIH, um, 
start or plan to start some studies to compare both devices, the first one, uh, Jarvik, compared to Berlin Heart X-Core, and then um, this ECMO, portable ECMO device, compared to uh, conventional ECMO. There are a lot of problems, reimbursement, small number of patients, large number of sites, and so on and so on. And this is the timetable of this pumpkin trial. So it is a vision. You know? It is a vision. But uh, in my personal opinion, uh, we will get probably Jarvik 2000 uh, in two, three years in the clinical practice, probably. Um, but this is uh, not in two, three, four years all the, the, the st study and the trial uh, will be finished. What's about Gooch patients? And Gooch patients, and most of them, it's, um, the question is not only to save the life. In most or in some of these patients, the, the question is to improve quality of life. Not, uh, not to let the patients deteriorate. And, then, and this is a reason for assist device implantation. Um, these are two patients with um, uh, sending uh, procedure and um, with CC, TGA after VSD repair and so on. So in these patients, assist device was implanted one case. The right ventricle is a, um, um, is a systemic ventricle. And uh, here it was in both cases, device was implanted without heart-lung machine. Here free wall of the right systemic ventricle and here in diaphragmatic side of the right systemic ventricle and um, it's a um, very good option to do it without bypass. The next possibility is circulite pump. This is a micro pump, a small pump, pumping up to two and a half liters um, and uh, that is, um, it's possible to implant also without uh, cardiopulmonary bypass in adults we implanted uh, through, left lateral, uh, through right lateral thoracotomy, and the pump itself is sitting here in the pocket-like pacemaker. You see it here. This is connecting to the subclavian artery. I can connect it to the systemic uh, atrium, or atrium which is before systemic ventricle, and then uh, connect to the, uh, uh, to the um, systemic circulation, pumping two liters. So maybe it's enough as a palliation, as a, um, as a just uh, improved quality of life. And this is how does it look in patients with dilative cardiomyopathy, here left atrium going through the, um, through the chest, and then here the pump is here, and this is a graph to the subclavian artery. It's also possible to use it uh, trans, uh, completely trans, um, uh, trans, um, to, um, to trans, um, this, uh, through the vessels and through the, um, through the um, septum. So you can puncture, you can go through the um, vein, subclavian vein, puncture, puncture the atrial septum and place the pump uh, into left atrium and then, um, it's no need for left lateral, uh, right lateral thoracotomy. It's possible to do in cassette laboratory like a pacemaker. The next possibility is tissue engineering to perform some patch which is contracting. And uh, Dr. Rutsky showed this from the other point, the uh, whole heart. And um, this is the future, but um, as it's uh, known for, um, for xenotransplantation, uh, it's, um, I, I, this is, I cite my, my uh, boss, Professor Hetzer, he said every time, xenotransplantation is the future, and will stay always the future. And I think it is the same here. This tissue engineering is future, and will stay always the future, at least for us. In conclusion, primary heart transplantation remains today, and for the near future, the best option for children with end-stage heart failure. However, paracorporeal mechanical circulatory support devices should be employed early, before multi-organ failure um, appears and before the patient gets in trouble. And in children, over 20 kg implantable devices like hardware HVAT or hardware next generation MVAT uh, are preferable. Patients with congenital heart disease, particularly with single ventricle anatomy, represent a still very challenging patient group. And technical and um, clinical situation should decide which kind of treatment is the best for these patients. In Gooch patients, 
Mechanical circulatory support, and of course I speak here about implantable devices, as a destination therapy should be more liberally taken into consideration because heart transplantation is sometimes not an option uh, for these patients because of high perioperative mortality, long waiting time. So we can improve quality of life in these patients with mechanical circulatory support. And um, I am surgeon, I'm working with mechanical assist devices. And as I told you, um, one vision will, be, uh, will stay future forever. But the next vision is to get some new device. And this device, in my opinion, should be maximally minimized, but have different sizes. Modular design, fully implantable, transcutaneous energy transfer. Um, uh, the best, it's uh, no energy transfer um, necessary, so we can put some plutonium battery inside, if somebody wants to have this. Special surfaces with no need for anticoagulation. This is important because now the most problem in our patients in adult and, and, uh, and also pediatric population with, an, um, when, uh, with assist devices, mechanical circulatory support is uh, anticoagulation, thromboembolic events. We will get some surfaces, surfaces which uh, do not adhere some thrombi or do not promote uh, thrombi formation, this would be really a huge step uh, forward. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>